In this video, I'm going to show you how to manage objects and arrays in a React app using state. So I have this web app here that displays a list of dad jokes and has a form so that I can enter a new dad joke. And when I hit add joke, it should display that new joke in this list. And to get this all working correctly, all of these jokes are gonna to need to be stored in an array that is managed by state. But in the app, I have the jokes just stored in a normal JavaScript array, and then I'm mapping over those jokes to create a different joke component, and then I have a joke form as another component here. And when a new joke is submitted with that form, this function is called right here, and if I open up the console, we should be able to see that I did try and create a new joke there but nothing is currently happening here. And what I really need to do is create a new joke object that has an ID and a bit of text and add it into this jokes array and then have that new joke render on the screen through this map right here. So the very, very first thing I need to do is create a new joke object. And if this was a real application, I would probably send this piece of text to a server. That server would store that in a database somewhere, generate an ID for this joke, and then send that ID back down to the client so that I could use it in the array. But since I'm not dealing with any network requests here, I'm just gonna mock creating an ID here. So I'm gonna use the crypto library to create a random UUID. Uh, so here I have this new joke object, has the text, has the ID, it fits in with this schema up here. And if I wanna add it to this jokes array, I could just say jokes.push new joke object, and now my array will have three items in it. But we know that if I just update a JavaScript variable, that isn't gonna cause React to re-render anything on the screen. It isn't gonna make that joke appear as a component. So adding a new joke here does absolutely nothing. And that's because this array needs to be a state variable. I need to store this in state. So let's do exactly that. I'm gonna import useState from React. And then instead of this being a normal variable, I'm now gonna use useState, and this will be the initial value. I'm still gonna have these two jokes as the initial value for the jokes. And then we just need a set jokes function here. And now jokes is actually stored in state. So updating my jokes array should cause a re-render. But remember that when we're using state, I can't update the state variable directly. I have to use that set function, in this case, set jokes. So now the jokes array is stored in state, but the code written as it is still won't work because we can't mutate an array or an object directly that is part of state. Instead, we always have to use the setter function. So this is not allowed when using state, and in this case, it just won't do anything. What we really need to do is use the setJokes function here. And this function is expecting a new array of jokes. So I need to somehow set the jokes array to be the current jokes array plus that new joke without mutating the initial array at all. And this syntax will not work. It is not valid JavaScript. But the idea here is that I need the existing array with this new object added into the array, but I can't manipulate the existing array. So essentially we're making a copy of this array, but with a new joke inside of it. And in JavaScript, there is a few different ways that we could go about doing this, but the most common is to use the spread operator. So I'm gonna create a brand new array that I pass to set jokes. And this is gonna contain the new joke object, and it's gonna contain all the jokes from the existing array but this would actually put an array into an array. So if I spread the existing array, it's just gonna take all of those objects out of the array and dump them into this new array. So I've essentially made a brand new array that contains all of the existing joke objects plus my new joke object. So now if I go back in here and I just type in a new joke and click add joke, I can see that that appears at the bottom of the list. And if I say another joke here, it will again appear at the bottom of the list. So every time I add a new joke now, this code will get called, it will create a brand new array and put the new joke on the very end of the array. And this causes a re-render right here, which is just gonna map over each joke object and create a new joke component for each of those objects. And if I didn't want this joke to appear at the end of the list, I could just move this up to the front here. And now anytime I add a new joke, 
it's going to appear at the very top of the list here, which is awesome. It's just really easy to get the exact behavior that I want here. And remember that all of this is just stored in state. I'm not using a database. I don't have a back end. And in a real app, you would really need those things because if I refresh my page, all of that new data is gonna go away and I'm just gonna have my initial state presented on the screen. So that's adding a new object to an array, but what if I wanted to delete one of these jokes from that array? Let's go back to this joke component and I'm just gonna add a delete button at the very bottom here, delete. And on click, I am going to call a function and this function is gonna to have to come from the app component because app is managing all of this joke state here. So although the joke component can tell the app that it's time to delete a joke, the actual deletion from the array is gonna have to happen in app. So I'm gonna create a new function here just called uh, handle delete. Um, and I expect this to be passed in an ID. Uh, and we're gonna pass that into the joke component as an on delete prop. So this function exists in app. We're passing it to joke as on delete. So joke is going to have to accept an on delete function. And right here, I am gonna create a new function because we're gonna call on delete, but we're gonna pass in the ID of the joke so the app knows which joke to delete. And this is really common that we'll have a child component that will call a function on the parent component and just pass in something simple like the ID so that the parent component can manage an array of many of those objects. And before we actually modify the array at all, I'm gonna console log the ID out here, delete joke ID, just so we can see that all of this is connected and working. So if we go back over to the app now, each joke should have a delete button. And if I click the delete button, I can see we're trying to delete the joke with ID one or delete the joke with ID two. So now that we have that functionality set up, I actually need to remove the joke with this ID from that array. But remember, we cannot mutate the joke array itself. I need to call set jokes and pass in a brand new array that contains all of the existing jokes minus the joke that should be deleted. So again, copy the current array, but then somehow delete an object from that array as we're making the copy. And again, in JavaScript, there are actually a few ways of doing this, but the most common in a React app is to go jokes.filter and then, oh, look, it just auto-completed for me, return every joke where the ID does not equal the ID of the joke that I'm trying to delete because filter creates a brand new array that contains some of the items from the existing array. So in this case, we're gonna use filter to create an array that contains all of the jokes, all of the items from the existing array except for just one single object, and that's the object with the ID that is the same as the ID of the one we're trying to delete. And that will just remove it from that array. So now if I go back here and click the delete button, these just get deleted from that array. And again, it's just in state. So if I refresh the page, they'll appear again. But this does delete that from that array of jokes that exists in state. So we can use the spread operator when we wanna add a new object to the state array, and we use filter when we wanna remove an object from that array. And that's because these two methods don't manipulate the existing array, they create a brand new array with the changes that we need. And these are not React things, this is just normal JavaScript stuff here. So if you're not sure how the spread operator works or how to copy arrays or how filter works, it's worth getting a little bit more familiar with those concepts in JavaScript before then building React apps. If we go back to the app here, you can see that I can like or I can dislike a joke. And that is just some state that I am storing in the joke component itself. So that's only being stored here and app has no idea how many likes a single joke has. But realistically, that kind of data would be stored within the object itself. So each joke would have a total number of likes that would probably default to zero. And we would have to update those likes in this array of objects in order to update that state. And again, in a real app, we would probably send that data to a web API and it would store this information in a database. But for now, we're just gonna keep everything local. But I do wanna take that bit of state, that like count, and keep it in the app component as part of this object rather than having the joke component handle that itself. So I'm gonna have to make an update here where this is not handling the like count on its own. It's gonna accept that as a prop. 
And every time we like or dislike, we're gonna have to call a function on the parent component called on like or on dislike. There we go. So back in app, every time app creates a new joke, I'm actually gonna have it just spread the joke in here so that the ID, the piece of text, and the like count all get passed into the joke component without me having to specify each of those props individually. Uh, and I'm gonna move this onto multiple lines because it's getting to be a little bit of a larger component now. And then I need two more things. So I need an on like event handler and an on dislike event handler. And yeah, I'll just call this handle like and handle this like and then i'll just create functions for each of these and again we're passing in a function to a child component here where we need to be able to identify that specific object. So I have an array of jokes, and if joke one is liked, I need to know that it's joke one. And if joke two is liked, I need to know it's joke two. So these functions will always need to have an ID passed into it so we know which joke was actually liked or disliked or deleted. So back in my joke component, it's gonna have to call this onLike or onDislike function, and we're gonna pass in the ID of the joke, and that's all this component is really doing. It's becoming a really, really dumb component, which is nice a lot of the time. It presents the data on the screen and it has a couple of buttons for some actions, but really it's just offloading the responsibility of those to the app component so the app can manage the actual state for each of the jokes in this case. And again, before I do anything, I just wanna add a console log in here to make sure that everything is working. So we'll log the name and the ID. And then back over here, if I like a joke, I get handle like, handle dislike, handle like, handle dislike. Okay, so that seems to be working. Now back in here, I need to update that array so that the joke that is liked has a like count that is one more than it was, or if it was disliked, it has one less than it was. So I'm updating this state array but I'm actually updating an object within the state array and we can't mutate the array if it's part of state, but we also can't mutate the objects. So we need to copy the array and then any object that gets updated has to be a new copied version of that object where we make the changes on the copy so that we're not actually changing the current state, which is kind of weird, but not too difficult to do in JavaScript. I'm gonna come down to the handle like first and delete the console log. So we're gonna have to call the set jokes function to update that array of jokes, even though we're just updating one property of one object within that array. So I'm gonna call this function, and if you have GitHub Copilot like I do, it's probably gonna give you a suggestion like this, which is actually exactly what I wanna do right now, and that is use map to create a new jokes array. So this will create a new array from the existing array, where if we just return the joke object that's being passed into this callback function, we get the exact same object. So we could use map to just copy the array exactly. But we have this if statement here that changes things a little bit. Because if we come across the joke with the ID of the joke that we're trying to update, we can return a brand new object. And that's what these curly braces are. Let's create a brand new object here. And we're gonna use the spread operator to copy over every property from the current joke. So I found the joke, let's say I'm liking joke one in this case, I've got that joke object and I'm gonna copy every single property of joke one into a brand new object, so I make that copy. But then I'm gonna add a new property here, which is likes, which is gonna take the existing value of that joke's likes and add one to it. So it's, again, a little bit of a weird way of doing this, but if you understand how map works and spreading and creating objects does in JavaScript, then everything here can be broken down into its little JavaScript piece and does make sense. But when you put it all together, it can be a little bit overwhelming. So again, understanding the underlying JavaScript is really helpful in making all of this a lot easier. And then for dislike, it's gonna be the exact same thing. So I'm gonna copy and paste this. And instead of adding one, we are gonna subtract one. And remember, even though we're updating that single property, we still have to update the entire jokes array using the set jokes function. But now let's go back and see this in action. So if I like a joke, it's gonna increment that like count. And if I dislike a joke, it's gonna decrement that like count. And this should work for every single joke here. 
Uh, and if I create a new joke, uh, spiders are the only web devs that like bugs. Can add that in, that's now added, it's at the top here. I can like it, oh, I get Nan, that's interesting. So this is because when I created a new joke here, I only gave it text and ID. I didn't give it a like count. So down here, it should default to zero, but without it being defined here, it was just gonna be an undefined property and undefined plus one, I guess, is Nan. Let's actually verify that. Undefined plus one is Nan. Yeah, so that actually makes sense. Uh, so now it's just gonna forever be Nan because Nan plus anything is always gonna be Nan. Oh, I could just delete this joke because we've already implemented that logic. Now there's one more thing I wanna do here and that is to add some sort functionality. So I'm gonna add a new button at the top here called sort and we'll have an on click that will handle the sort. And what I want this to do is every time this button is clicked, why didn't that appear? I forgot to save. Every time, oh, what did I do? Oh, right, I don't have a handle sort function. I'm getting ahead of myself. Const handle sort equals, okay, we'll just leave it at that for now. So every single time I click the sort button, I want to sort all of the jokes by the highest rated at the top. So if this has one like and this has zero likes and I click the sort button, I want this like to be on top. So this should be a simple sort function. So if you've ever used sort before, you should know that we should just be able to do something like this. So I have the jokes array that is part of state. Uh, I can call sort on that, which gives me a callback function that expects me to return a value less than zero, greater than zero, or zero. So just by subtracting the like count here, this will work. So this will sort the array correctly. And then because this returns the sorted array, I can call set jokes, pass in that array, and we should just see this all work. So this should be a really simple one. I'm gonna refresh this and just uh, increment the light count of the bottom one here, and then click sort and nothing happens. If I, oh, that was weird. When I disliked it, it kind of jumped around there. Um, let's see, if I sort, nothing happens. If I go up to four and sort, it's, it's not really doing what I want it to do and it does have this weird behavior in it. So that's kind of weird. And the reason this isn't really working correctly is because when we sort an array, it doesn't create a new array. JavaScript won't create a new array for us. It's kind of one of the only functions really that we'll use regularly that doesn't return a new array. Map returns a new array, filter returns a new array, but sort just returns the current array and it sorts everything in place. So to get this working correctly, because we're not supposed to manipulate the existing jokes array, what we should do is first copy this array and then call sort on that array. And again, there's a bunch of ways of doing this, but the simplest would be to just create a brand new array and then spread the jokes into that new array. So this is creating a copy of the jokes array and then we're calling sort on the copy rather than the jokes itself. So if we go back now, I'm gonna refresh here. Uh, I'm gonna increment the likes down here, click sort, and now that sorts correctly. And then if this one has a higher like count and I click sort, it's always gonna put the most liked at the very top. And if I click this a whole bunch, nothing's gonna happen because it's currently sorted in the correct order. And the main thing to remember here is that the rules of state are really important. We don't modify or manipulate the actual state variables themselves. Anytime we need to make a change, we have to copy that completely and then make the change on the copy. And that applies to the entire array, but it also applies to objects within an array because we can't just manipulate those objects, we have to create a copy of them. So as long as you're always making copies and then you call the set function with the copy, everything should work out correctly. But it can take a little bit of practice before all of this feels natural. So keep using React, keep practicing, keep building applications this way, and everything will become easier and start to make more sense over time. And that's it for this video, but in my next video, I'm gonna cover conditional rendering in React. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, and make sure you're subscribed to this channel so you don't miss any other videos that I make. Mm -hmm.